In this video for Grade 11 Chemistry, we're looking at the Solutions Unit, how to write molecular equations, net ionic equations, and identify spectator ions in precipitation reactions. So if you think you know what you're doing, pause the video as we go and try to, I try to fill in these things for yourself. So the first question we'll look at says, a solution of aluminum nitrate is mixed with a solution of potassium carbonate. So you need to identify the products that would form, write a balanced molecular equation, write the balanced net ionic equation, and identify spectator ions. So precipitation reactions are also double replacement reactions. We're mixing two solutions together. In this case, we're going to find aluminum carbonate as a product. So aluminum carbonate. And the other product would be potassium nitrate. All right, in terms of the ions that are involved in this reaction, when you look on a periodic table or in our data booklets, aluminum has a charge of three positive, so Al3 positive. Nitrate is a complex ion, NO3, and it's got a charge of negative one. Potassium is, is an alkali metal, its charge is positive. And carbonate is another complex ion, CO3, with a charge of two negative. So now let's write the molecular equation. Aluminum nitrate, since we have a three positive and a one negative, we'll need three nitrates to bond with the aluminum. So Al, NO3 in brackets, three. It was a solution, so we'll say aqueous. Aqueous means dissolved in water. Potassium carbonate, positive potassium and two negative carbonate, so we'll need two of the potassiums to bond with that carbonate. So plus K2CO3, it was also a solution, so aqueous. Draw an arrow. The product, aluminum carbonate, Aluminum is three positive, carbonate is two negative, so we're gonna need two of the aluminums, that'll be six positive, and three of the carbonates, that'll be six negative. So two aluminums, Al2, and three of the carbonates in brackets with a three. Now I'm gonna to hesitate to put aqueous beside that because we're gonna look up our solubility rules in a moment. And potassium nitrate. Potassium was positive, nitrate is negative, so just KNO3, and again, we're going to take a look at our, at our solubility rules to decide um, whether those are soluble or not. So we have in our data booklets at our school a table like this that says general solubility rules, and so students are allowed to use this during tests. So we have three basic rules, or four rules, that talk about salts being very soluble. So alkali metal salts, salts that begin with alkali metal cations, or ammonium salts are highly soluble. Nitrate salts and acetate salts are also highly soluble. Silver acetate is a little bit of an exception to that. Chloride, bromide, and iodide salts, those are all from the halogen family, are soluble, except when they're bonded with silver or lead and this mercury cation, which we don't see very often in regular grade 11 chemistry. Sulfate salts are also usually very soluble, but there's a slightly longer list of exceptions which will not be very soluble. So silver sulfate, lead sulfate, calcium strontium and barium sulfate are not very soluble. Then the rules change, rules five, six, seven, and they become salts that are not very soluble in water to begin with. So most hydroxide salts are only slightly soluble, so they're not very soluble. They're likely to be precipitates, except when they're from rule number one, so the alkali metal and the ammonium hydroxides. Calcium, strontium, barium hydroxide are also moderately soluble. Sulfite salts, oxalate salts, carbonate salts, phosphates, chromates are also not very soluble except when they're bonded to alkaline metals or ammonium cations. And finally, sulfide salts are not very soluble 
except when they're bonded to the alkaline metals or ammonium or if they're bonded to alkaline earth cations as well. So with those rules in mind, we look at aluminum carbonate and we realize we had one of the, our rules that talked about carbonate salts and it said that they're not very soluble unless they're bonded to alkaline metal cations or ammonium cations. So therefore, aluminum carbonate is not very soluble. So I'm going to put an S beside it, meaning it's going to be solid. It's going to be a precipitate in this reaction. Potassium nitrate, according to our first and second rules, it has an alkaline metal and it has nitrate. So by either one of those rules, it's highly soluble and so we're going to put AQ beside it, aqueous, it's dissolved in water. Now to balance the equation, I see I've got three nitrates, two potassiums here, and we've got KNO3. So three and two, the lowest common multiple would be six. So I'm going to put a three in front of there, and two in front of the aluminum nitrate. That's going to give me six nitrates and six potassiums. So I can put a six over here in front of KNO3, and that also balances my aluminums and balances my carbonates. So there's my balanced molecular equation. The net ionic equation. So aluminum carbonate is precipitating. It's the product of our chemical reaction. If you were watching this, you'd say, I see a solid forming as I mix those solutions. So I'm going to write in my net ionic equation the aluminum carbonate as the only product. So aluminum carbonate solid. And then I'm going to just notice that aluminum carbonate is made up of, oops, I forgot, subscript 3. It's made up of two aluminum cations and three carbonate anions. So to form aluminum carbonate, two aluminum three positive cations, aqueous, combine with three carbonate anions, two minus, also aqueous. So the aluminum cations come from the aluminum nitrate solution. The carbonate anions come from the potassium carbonate solution. Then when they combine, you get aluminum carbonate precipitating. Now if you notice, there were some ions up here that we did not include in the net ionic equation. The ions that we did not include are spectator ions. Spectators at a sporting event are the people watching the game. So the ions that we didn't include, they're floating around in the water and they're essentially watching this reaction happen. So the two ions that we didn't include were the potassium and the nitrate. Notice potassium nitrate was aqueous as, as our product. So potassium positive and nitrate negative, and if you want you can say aqueous. Those are the spectator ions in that reaction. All right, let's try this one a little tiny bit faster. Nickel-2 chloride reacts with sodium phosphate. So again, it's a double replacement reaction. We're going to get nickel-2 phosphate as one product. And we'll get sodium chloride as the other product. Now, remember, we're mixing solutions here, and so the two products are forming in solution. If they're both soluble, then really nothing is happening when we mix these things. A nickel chloride solution is really just nickel and chloride ions floating in the water. A sodium phosphate solution is just sodium and phosphate ions floating in the water. If we mix them, and the two products here are both aqueous, they're both soluble, then we would still have nickel and phosphate and sodium and chloride ions floating in the water. So in that case, there's really no reaction happening. On the other hand, if one of these two things is actually not very soluble, or maybe both of them are not very soluble, in that case, we would definitely see a precipitation reaction happening. You would see a solid form when you mix those two solutions. So now let's identify the ions. Nickel-2 is Ni2 positive. Chloride is a halogen, Cl minus. Sodium is an alkali metal and a positive. Phosphate is a complex ion, PO4, 3 negative. So when I have nickel 2 chloride, the formula for that would be NiCl2, aqueous, it was a solution. 
is reacting with sodium phosphate, which would be Na3PO4, and it was also a solution, so aqueous. And now the products, nickel 2 phosphate. The nickel is 2 positive and the phosphate is 3 negative, so the formula would be Ni3PO4. Two, and we'll hesitate to put the phase, we'll look at our solubility rules in a moment, plus sodium chloride, NaCl. Now everybody knows, I hope, from common experience that table salt, sodium chloride, is highly soluble in water. Looking at our solubility rules, sodium is an alkali metal, so alkali metal salts are highly soluble. Chloride salts are also highly soluble, except when they're bonded to silver or lead. So this guy is definitely aqueous solid, or sorry, aqueous dissolved. Phosphate salts, though, and our solubility rules said they're usually not very soluble unless they're bonded to alkali metals or to ammonium ions. In this case, bonded to nickel, it's not going to be very soluble, so we'll say solid. This is my precipitate that's going to form. So in my net ionic equation, I'll write the formula of the precipitate, Ni3PO4, 2, solid. And notice that it's composed of three nickel cations and two phosphate anions. So the reactants would be three Ni2 positive aqueous ions, reacts with two phosphate, PO4, 3 negative aqueous ions. The aqueous nickel ion comes from the nickel chloride solution. The aqueous phosphate ion comes from the sodium phosphate solution. And when those solutions are mixed, these two things precipitate as nickel phosphate. The two ions that we did not include in the net ionic equation were the sodium and the chloride ions, so Na positive and Cl negative. Now, before I leave this, I just noticed I didn't actually balance the molecular equation up above, so let's quickly do that. We have two phosphates here and three nickels here. So how about if we put a three in front of the nickel chloride and a two in front of the sodium phosphate. Three times two is six chlorides, and two times three is six sodiums, so we would need six NaCls as well. By coincidence, that's the same kind of balancing as we saw in the last example. All right, we'll do one more example here. So sodium sulfide is being mixed with a solution of iron to iodide. So when we look at that as a double replacement reaction, we'll get sodium iodide as a product, and we'll get iron to sulfide. Iron to sulfide as the other product. The ions involved, and a positive sulfide is just from the periodic table, S2 negative. Um, iron 2 is Fe2 positive, and iodide is a halogen, so I negative. So sodium sulfide, positive and 2 negative, would be Na2S, and it was a solution, aqueous. It's reacting with iron 2 iodide, which would be FeI2, also a solution, so aqueous. And that's going to form sodium iodide, Na plus and I minus, so just NaI. And my solubility rules tell me that alkaline metal salts are highly soluble, so this guy is definitely aqueous. And the other product is iron 2 sulfide, the Fe2 plus and the S2 minus, so that's just FeS. The last rule on the solubility rules said that sulfide salts are not very soluble unless they're bonded to alkaline metals or to alkaline earth metal cations. So iron sulfide, iron is a transition metal, this would definitely be a precipitate solid to balance that equation, two sodiums, two iodides, we'll put a two in front of the NaI, then Fe and S, we're balanced. So the iron sulfide is my product that's precipitating, so I'll write in my net ionic equation, FeS solid, 
and it's composed of an iron cation and a sulfide cation, so just Fe2 positive aqueous from the iron iodide solution reacts with sulfide 2 negative from the sodium sulfide solution to give me iron 2 sulfide. The two ions that are watching this reaction happen would be the sodium and the iodide ions, since they're not included in the net ionic equation. Those are the spectator ions. All right, so one more. Again, pause the video if you think you know what you're doing and try it yourself. So we have lead 2 nitrate reacting with magnesium chloride. So the two products would be lead 2 chloride and magnesium nitrate. The ions involved, the lead 2, would be Pb2 positive. Nitrate is a complex ion, so NO3 negative. Magnesium is an alkaline earth metal, so Mg2 positive. And chloride, the halogen Cl negative. So lead 2 nitrate, 2 positive and negative would look like Pb, and then two nitrates attached to that. It's a solution, so aqueous, and it reacts with magnesium chloride, 2 positive and negative, so MgCl2, also aqueous. It was a solution. The lead 2 chloride, 2 positive lead and Cl negative, would be PbCl2. Now, my solubility rules tell me that chloride salts are usually very soluble. However, there were two common exceptions to that, when they're bonded to silver or when they're bonded to lead. So lead chloride is not very soluble. It's going to be a solid precipitate in this reaction. The other product was magnesium nitrate, two positive magnesium and negative nitrate, so MgNO3-2. And because the magnesium nitrate has nitrate ions, nitrate salts are highly soluble, so that would be aqueous as well. All right, so there's the balanced, not balanced, molecular equation. We have two nitrates and two chlorides, so we're going to, sorry, two nitrates here, so we're going to need two nitrates here. Actually, it is balanced. It took me a moment to see that. All right, the net ionic equation. Lead chloride is my precipitate forming, so PbCl2, solid, and it's forming from the lead cation and two chloride anions, so Pb2 plus aqueous from the lead nitrate solution, and two chloride aqueous from the magnesium chloride solution. The ions that are not involved in the net ionic equation are the ones that are spectators would be the magnesium 2 positive and the nitrate ion. And again, you can put aqueous beside those if you like. All right, so there we have it, several examples of, of, of completing double replacement precipitation reactions, practicing with our chemical nomenclature to write molecular equations and balancing the equations, and then using our solubility rules to predict whether things are aqueous, dissolved in water, highly soluble, or solid, not very soluble in water, and likely to be a precipitate. Then we were able to write net ionic equations, taking the precipitate and identifying the ions that are forming it. And finally, the ions that are not involved in that precipitation are the spectator ions.